Wait, so you this met, one? Yeah. You met like the whole band of Kiss, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll chat with Gene Simmons for quite some time. Uh, awesome. Got a pretty sweet picture I'll show you later. Wait, wait, I, I just want to ask a question here. Many face yeah, actors are fans of Eddie and Larry Warren in their 20s. Is he boring with the name? No, he's an outstanding individual. Nobody ever knows the name of the band. I saw him at the Pepsi Center. Because we had backstage, meet and greet, second row center stage. And I chatted with Gene Simmons. 15 to 20 minutes. Just he and I just chatting. It was awesome. Unbelievable. Unbelievable person. Was he like rock on? You know, he was. Uh, he. He asked when my first Kiss concert was, and I told him what it was. He goes, and he told me what their song set was then. He remembered what that song set was in 1977. I, the guy remembers everybody. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, he's a big guy. So I just want to point out, remember, yes, Kiss icon, and then the, the view of some beach someplace. Just want to remember, I record all of my lessons. So... If you happen to miss, or you're like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot, find this page. I mean, just go to YouTube, find Mr. Serp's Classroom, and if you still can't find it, email me. I'll email you back. The link is at the bottom of the email. And it's all the lessons. So this would have been yesterday's lesson. It's 33 minutes, just as a raw footage of the video. I'm recording now, so you know, if you guys want to do a shout-out, it'll be on the video forever. Okay, shout-outs are done. So... Just wanted you to make sure you're aware of that. So again, that's kind of a neat opportunity for kids. Not all teachers record. I don't record so you can ditch class, which I don't think has ever been a problem. I can see a student saying, sweet, I don't have to come to class because I, I can just watch it online. Though that is true, you're still losing out on the authentic portion of the lecture. So um, let's see. So the new second semester books should be coming in. So you need to get over there to purchase one. And by next week, but I need to it is snow. Oh. All right, Bo, I'm gonna send you back to that office. I'll run over on that second shelf. There's like a pink crate on the second shelf. There's a stack of papers. In that stack of papers is gonna be like a couple of packets that look like our homework we've worked on. Get if you can grab pens. like three of them. Grab me a bone pen. Bone, pen. bone pens aren't over there. You gotta come to my other office. Which one is that? That one over there. It's the one that's like oh, way over yonder. I thought paper. you were talking. Way over yonder. No, I wasn't sending that far. So, all right. Um, did you all get that homework done? Yeah, but yeah. Just so get a look. Make sure cell phones are put away. All right. And just, they can be in the office position completely off. You can have them on the desk. And I'm just kind of spot being dictated, being on the contempt. Good. You know, you're new. Basically, my greeting system is pretty simple. You walk around and take a look. You get a 432 or 1 or 0. You can do it. And if you need an extra day, because life happens, then it's not a big deal. It's a 3.5 And the hard thing is sometimes people look at it saying, but I'm acing all my homework. Because I'm glancing to see that it looks like an honest attempt. You found it? That is right here, pal. So, oh, go ahead and put that in. So let's talk about that homework. We started talking about, let's see if we remember this correctly. Let's see if Bo has figured this out. Bo? Yeah, baby. Bo! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we started with yesterday. We talked about, you know, before break, we talked about you can craft two linear equations. They can cross, which gives you one solution. They can be parallel, which gives you no solution because they don't cross. And then we talked about it could be the same exact line which lies right on top of itself, which is infinite solution. And then we also talked about, we said we got into yesterday saying graphing is a nice representation, but if you add some fraction or decimal amount where they cross as the word pair, x comma y, 
it would be really hard to figure out where 0.8723 comma 3597s yield false. So a slightly better way sometimes to work these out might be the substitution method. Okay? So Reese, one, two, or three. One of those. Any of those you want to see? Can I please see? Ben, you're going to pick from four, five, or six. Number ones, okay? So take a look at number one on your packet and follow along, please. All right, so we could indeed graph these using both, our, both the slope intercept form. The first one would have a slope or an intercept of the y intercept of positive one. The slope is one over one, so I go up one, right one, make my line. The second one has a y intercept of negative one, has a slope of two over one, so from negative one on the y axis, I'd go up two, right one. Wherever these graphs intersected, we would indeed have um, the solution. I know that y is equal to x plus 1 and y is equal to 2x minus 1. Thoughts? Yeah. Would you do x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1? Yeah. Because I know that y is equal to this and y is equal to this and y is the exact same letter. I'm going to set this equal to this. so the video come up a little better. Okay, so those are both equal to each other. And this is like first or second week of Algebra 1. Perhaps you've seen it in earlier classes. How would I go about starting to solve for x? Yeah? You can subtract either. You can subtract 1x or 2x. You, so you can subtract x, you can subtract 2x, you can subtract 1, or you can even add 1. You have four choices. George, pick one of these for me. Your choice. Subtract 2x, okay. Was that the one that you all would have picked? Maybe not. Is George doing it wrong then? No. George saw it this way. All right, so x subtracted 2x. What? Negative x. Negative x. Negative x plus 1 is equal to negative 1. Subtract one, good. Those are going to cancel, so I get negative x equals negative two, I believe. And then what should we do? Yeah, we're going to change the signs on both sides, so x is equal to two. So the nice thing is when you use substitution, you go from two letters that you don't know to a single or the same letter, and then you just have to solve for it. So I know that my x value is going to be two, so I'm looking for two comma some y value. What do I have to do to get this y value back? What do you think? Back? Ideas? Christian, I want to find a y value. What do you think? So first, first off, do we all agree that this is a y value? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. I, you know, I, I, let's take a look. Would it make sense to take this x value and plug it in here? Anywhere here? Because what value am I looking for? Y. Do I see a y value in any of this here? No. So should I plug this x value into any of this here? No. I'm looking for a y value. Where do I have a y value right now? Yeah, back up on the two original first problems. Agree? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to plug it in right here. What do you think would happen if I plugged it in right here? So let's see. If I plug 2 in right here, I get 2 plus 1, which is 3. If I plug that in here, I get 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 1, which is 2. Should that be the same? Yeah. 4 minus 1 is 2. It happens, it happens, right? It's a snowy day. We're still on Christmas break. I get it. 
Hey, um. TJ, if I were to have graphed this, do you think this would have been an okay one to graph? And if so, why would you think it would be a good one to graph? So if I had originally graphed this problem and found that these two lines crossed each other, would you feel this would be probably have been an okay problem to graph? What, and it has to do with the answer. Yeah. Why do you think that? I, I agree with you, but help me out. Help me to understand why you, you and I would feel this would be a good one that we could have graphed. It has to do with the answer. It was this big. Two and three are nice whole numbers. We don't have some silly fraction answer, decimal answer. So this might have been an okay one to graph. But do you know when you start a problem if it's going to come out to nice two nice whole numbers as a solution? I mean, if you see that, you're going to go far with math. I, I don't know where else, but I, I think. But, you know, they ask you to use substitution on this. It had to come out to a really nice answer. This probably would have worked out nicely if we had graphed it. If we had graphed it, these two lines would have intersected at 2, comma 3. Does that make sense how I explain that? Does it? Okay. Now, Ben, I asked you to choose from 4, 5, or 6. Any of those? 5. 5? Okay. Number 5. So I get y equals. Okay, I have two linear equations, yes? And I want to use substitution. So a few things on substitution. I didn't really talk about too much. I didn't talk about too much. But is one of the letters solved for on one of the equations right now? Yes. Can we see that okay? So what are the letters is indeed solved for? Which letter has been solved for right now on the equation? Y. Y. What is Y equivalent to right now? 4x plus 11. 4x plus 11. Does everyone understand that? So I have a Y that I know. I know what are the letters. Now some of you are like, well, what about X? We don't know X in this case. We haven't solved for X in this case. But what do you feel we should do with 4X plus 11. What should we do with this? Plug it in for Y. Where? Yes. Yeah, that's going to come in right there. Now, Matt, what's, gonna, what's that 4 going to do? It's, it was here. There was a Y right there. So I'm going to put this in there. So what do you think I'm going to do with that 4? What math property would take place? I'm going to distribute. I'm going to take that 4... I'm going to distribute it here and here. I get negative 3x plus 16x plus 44. Hey, where'd that 44 come from? 4 times 11, right? And then this whole thing is still going to be equal to 18. Now, the nice thing about when we substitute, we go from two unknowns, x and y, to how many unknowns? One. One. We don't know what the x value is. So I'm going to do this math. I'm going to combine like terms first. So if I combine those together, what do I get? 13x. All right. I'm still going to add this 44. Okay. That's. I like it. Subtract 44 from both sides. Because we want to isolate the x. Cancel this out. 18 subtracted from 44. It's going to be negative. How much? 46? OK. How do I get the x all by itself? Yeah, 13x for you multiply, so let's undo it by division. Cancel, cancel. x equals negative 2. Good. So part of this answer is negative 2. 
I'm now looking for a y value again. So should I plug that y value into any of the red? No, should I plug it into the blue that's right above the red? No, I'm looking for what? I'm looking for y. Okay, where should I plug this in? So can I plug it in here? Can I, what happens if I plug it in here? I will get the same answer. Is one of those an easier equation to plug it into? Yes. Which one, the top one or the bottom one, Angelo? Bottom, Bo bottom one? I, I'm happy to plug it in here, but remember I want to solve for y, so I plug it in here. Take a look at that top equation, though. What's that top equation? It's y. What am I looking for? And that's y equals, right? I, and you're absolutely right. I could plug it in here, okay? I could. But it might be a little bit more work to get the exact same answer. Right? Does that make sense how I said that? So do you want me to still plug it in the bottom one or can I plug it in the top one? It's your choice. You want to go to the top? Okay. Does everyone see why we're plugging it into the top? We're looking for a y value. The top equation is y equals. Right? So if I plug it into this bottom one, I am indeed going to get the exact same answer, but the top equation is already set up as y equals, so it should make it a smidge easier to work out. So where I have my x up top, <coughs> I'm going to plug in this x value. Okay, so I'm going to plug negative 2 in right there. So I'm going to get y equals 4 plus 11. There was an x there. What's going to go there now? Negative 2. And then we're going to do the arithmetic. Bo, do you think if we had graphed this problem originally, this would be a good one to graph? Well, what, what about the x and the y that we know? What about that answer makes it nicer? Starts with an x. Long x over here. Yeah, there's no fraction. So negative 2 comma 3, that might fit on your x, y axis that you drew on your own paper. Okay? Hmm. All right, so on that worksheet, 7, 8, 9 is just asking, hey, a system has one solution. How would you draw it? Or what would you know? If it has one solution, what does the graph look like with the two lines? It crosses one time. Crosses one time. I like it. So if you just drew like an X, two lines crossing each other, that's one solution. If you were to draw one that has no solutions, what are those two lines doing? Are they crossing? Not they lay it on top of each other? No, they are parallel. parallel. They're not going to intersect. And then the last one, if you have infinite solutions or infinite, infinitely many solutions, they are the exact same line on top of each other. And you remember, we learned different forms that lines could begin to be sitting in. So it's very possible if we had a graphing problem that we're going to have y equals as one way, and then we might have AX plus BY equals C, which is called standard form, where A, B, and C are numbers in order to solve it. So it's not always going to stick out real nicely that they are um, the same solution. Solve by graphing 10, 11, 12. That's all previous knowledge. Does anybody want to see any of those three? George, what do you got? Doctor. We good? Not, uh, 10, 11, 12? George, did you have your hand up for any of those? Uh, no, I already solved that one. You're good for it? Yeah. 
12? All right. Number 12. Ooh, number 12. We want to graph this? Are you kidding me? Okay. We'll see. There ain't. All right, so number 12, they want us to use the graphing method, which was a method that we had learned before break. So we're not using substitution on this one. Okay? No substitution might work nicely. If we were to graph these, if I graph this one, what method would I use? The cover method. So if I use the cover method, x equals what? Two. Two. And remind me, is x going right, left, or up, down? Right, left. So if x equals two, I'm going to come right out here, and I'm going to put a dot. And then if I do the cover method here, I get negative 2y equals 2. So what is y going to be equal to? Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1, right? Right? Does that make sense? And then I'm going to connect the dots. And of course, I'm freehand drawing this, so it might not be the neatest thing on earth. Okay, the second one, am I going to use the cover method on this one? No. What method am I going to use? Y equals mx plus b. So what was my first thing? Ray, what's my first point to plot on the green? Three. Okay, so in the y direction, I'll go one, two, three. And then I'm going to use the slope as a map to find a second point. So from this point right here, I'm going to go up one and over two. Um, um, up one over two. Do they kind of look? No, are they parallel? Yeah, they have up one over two. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see what you did, Gage. You said this was up one over two, and this was up one over two. So that means the slopes are the same. So if the slopes are the same, they're not going to intercept each other. They're parallel. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not the same line because they're in separate regions. They're parallel. So what's the solution? None. No solution. Love it. We good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, there's one more. Dude, it's a word problem. Word problem. We got a story. Yeah. Okay. So remember, we're going to check your our reading comprehension level in math because we're going to have a story problem. So the length of a rectangle is far more than twice the width. The perimeter of a rectangle is 44. Centimeters, and we know the perimeter equation is P equals 2W plus 2L. Let W, the width of the rectangle, what is the length in terms of W? And then find the dimensions of the rectangle. Okay, so this is problem number 13. I'm going to draw myself a picture because pictures go well. I like picture books better than word books. Okay, the ones that are scratch and sniff, those are pretty cool. Sorry, I don't have any. So things that we know, they tell us that the length is four more than twice the width. The length is four more than twice the width. Now, they tell us that the perimeter is 44 centimeters, but they also tell us that the perimeter equation is 2w plus 2l. Okay? So let w equal the width of the rectangle. What is the length in terms of W? Well, the length in terms of W is this. The length is 4 plus 2W. So W is the width. Find the dimensions. Okay. So things I know. And again, we have this nice little story. I told us a story. So we know that, let's see. We know that the perimeter is 44. So that's going there. Great. What else did we figure out? Do we solve for W anywhere or L anywhere? We solve for length. It's part of the story. All right. Get out of here. We know that that, where is that going to go? Is it going to go in for 2L or is it going to go in for the L? L, yeah. So this is going to go in for the L here. So I have 44 equals 2W plus 2. There was an L there. Now I'm going to have 4 plus 2W. 
distribute. Combine like terms. Subtract right, eight. So thirty six equals six W divided by six. So I get a width of six. Hey, how would I find the line? If I know the width is six, how do I find the line? Plug it in where? Plug it in. Plug it in. It's six for W. Yeah, plug it in right there. So the length, if I know the width is six, then length is four plus two times six. That's L equals, I'm going to work up, I'm sorry. The length is 16. So I have a length of 16 and a, a width of six. And I think it should be in centimeters. We like to label stuff. It's six quad. Hmm. Huh. Feel okay? Hey, uh, yes, sir. I was going to ask if I can use this. You don't ever have to ask. No, just can you? Can We're not in English, Mr. Gage. I Thank you. All right. Um, let's let's do this. Okay, let's walk through this problem. Let's walk through this problem. Can I walk through it with you? Yeah. Okay, I want it. Okay, you. I love it. I love it. All right. We want to use substitution. Still with me in this adventure of math? So in substitution, I want to have one of the letters solved for that I can plug into the other. Now I have 3x plus 4y equals 6. Does it look like that might be an easier one to solve, George? Could I get x or y alone on that very first one, the 3x plus 4y? Does it look real easy? If I wanted to get x or y all by itself, there might be a little more math manipulation to do over here. Do you think that would be all right? But what about this one? Can I get x or y all by itself by doing one step? What do you think, George? You know this? Can I get, I want to get x or y all by itself on one side. Right now I have both x and y on a single side. Hey, let's see. Oh, he's here. Cool, thanks. See, you've got good news. Still in my class. All right. But you're still in my class. That's always good news. Talk to me. All right, so, George, still sticking with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? Cheers forever. George, still coming to you. I want to get x or y alone on one of those equations. What single? Right side? Okay. Which one do you want? X or y? You want to get y by itself? No, x. Yeah. What do you think I have to do to get x all alone up here? What math operations? You're yeah, man, you got it. Subtract the 5y from both sides. Okay, that cancels that. That gives me this. What does that look like? Looks like a math problem, dude. Looks like, looks like a Wookiee. No, it doesn't. All right. So if I were to use substitution, if I were to use substitution, you guys still with me? Still there? Yes. I already use substitution. Where am I going to plug 7 minus 5y? 3x. Yes. In where the 3x? Now am, I sub, am I replacing the entire 3x or am I plugging it in just for x? Just plugging it in for x. So this right here, this right here, 
is going to plug right there. So I'm going to get 3 quantity plus 4y equals 6. What was right here? X. What is now going to go there? 7 minus 5y. We good? Angelo, what math operation am I going to do with that 3? Distribute. Yeah, bud. All right, that's 21 minus 15y plus 5 or 4y equals 6. Okay, I have, nicely by substitution, I went from two unknown letters, an x and a y, to just what letter? A y. I went to a y. Okay, so if I am able to solve this for y, I'm going to get the y component of my answer. Okay, so uh, if I add those together. Oh, wait, no. 11 or no, negative, 11. negative 11. See that okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, subtract 21. I like it. You know what's going to happen on this problem? We'll get in the F word. We got fractions. Oh, negative 15 over negative 11. Negative over negative is positive. positive so I get 15 over 11. And remember, it's more accepted in the world of math to leave it as an improper fraction than it is to change it to a mixed number, okay? So I get 15 over 11 as my x value. Or, yeah, my y value. Thank you. Someone's listening. Thank goodness. Okay. You're all listening. I love you guys for it. What value am I looking for? X. X. Steve, I need your help. Okay, and I'm going to direct your attention to two equations. I have my first equation here, and I have a modified second equation. What value am I looking for, Steve? You, I you put y in the second one. I'm looking for x. Why does that seem like a good one to use? Yeah, I, I want to know what x is equal to. I've solved the second equation, x equals, so if I take this ugly fraction and plug it in right there, I'm going to get this. Oh, boy. I tell you, you know, the nerve of me. I got a fraction. I tell you. All right, 5 times 15, because remember that's 5 over 1. 5 times 15 is 75. 75, 75 over 11. Holy crow. Hang on. Let's take this. Let's figure this out. I get 7 over 1 minus 75 over 11. Should we do the butterfly method? Yes. Okay, C. If you don't know the butterfly method, watch. Ready? I go from here to here and I multiply. So I get 77. Still with me? Yes. Minus comes along for the right. 75 times what is? 75. Sweet. And then I multiply the bottom. 1 times 11. Oh, shoot. 11. 11, okay. And then 75, 77 minus 75 is? Two, so I get two over eleven is my x value, and I'll tell you what, this not, might not have been a real pretty one to graph at all because of what reason, Bo? You know this, buddy. Fractions. They're fractions. Two elevenths, <laughs> kind of hard to find on your graph. The fifteenth elevenths is also kind of hard to find on your graph. Exactly. You can give me the general area, but that's what we have, huh? So, we took substitution a smidge further. So, sometimes we might have to take one of the equations and modify it to have x or y all by itself. Look for the simpler of the ones to do that. Does that make sense, like that? So, look for the simpler one. This one wasn't too simple. If I wanted to solve for x or y up here, if I want to just talk to you real quick, if I solve for x up here, I'd have to subtract 4y from both sides. And then divide everything by 3, and that would give me x equals this mass. Yeah. So look for the simpler one to solve for. Is it always going to be a simpler one? As of right now, yes. Could it get more complicated later? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, there is going to be another method that we're going to learn in the next couple days that will help when you have the ugly ones that don't solve nicely. Okay, and they're all a part of logical thinking. They're all a part of solving a puzzle. And I just wanted to emphasize with you all, when you solve a puzzle, you are thinking, you are learning 
a higher level of order of events in order to make it better. And you guys all know teaching's all about me, right? Yes. All about me. Yes. The reason it's all about me is the better educated y'all get, the better your careers will be, which means I get more money for my retirement. So again, it's all about me. The reason I have that med class that I, I come at 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm getting older. I need some really good people and doctors and nurses and stuff like that. So it's all about me. So see how I turn it? It's all about me. People, and I'm a real selfish person. Yo, it's all about me. It's basically it's all about me. It, you know, I, I mean, it comes down to the bottom line. What happens? The better educated kids are, the better they get. Better that money wise is for me, and, and, and then the better educated we educate you to go into medicine, the better it is for me for healthcare. Again, it's all about me. And you know what? Then you all get to dispose of my body in the way that you should be disposed. But then my kids are younger than you, so I want to make sure you're taking care of my kids. Oh, well, so again, I brought it back to me. No, I'm not. Sorry, I can't take. I'm sorry, I am such a selfish person. It's just about me. Sorry, kids. Well, I know you thought it was about you. It's so dumb. Yeah. All right, so guys, and girls, um, how are we feeling? Yeah, we feel good. Like, is this stuff okay? Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it doesn't seem like the the worst thing. So what I'd like us to do, and, and I want to make sure we this doesn't become a habit. Um, I let it slide yesterday because you know we were welcome back and, and we still need to figure out a, a schoolwork. Um, I'm gonna give you homework. We still have ten minutes left in class. The congregation here, starting in 30 seconds, is really frowned upon. And I'd really ask you to, you know, let's start on the homework. Let's start on the assignment. If you don't have it, take your phone, take a picture of it, start working out the first couple problems. <coughs> so your assignment for tomorrow that I will be marking off is worksheet 2B, which is page 126. 127. Anyone know where Preston is? Daycare. Daycare, I'll tell you. 